So a little while back, I created a beginner's tutorial to show you how to stack and process your images in Cyril. During that process, I showed you how to remove the stars and add them back using Photoshop layering techniques. This video is gonna show you how to remove those stars in the same fashion that I showed you in that previous video, but instead of using Photoshop, we're gonna add the stars back into Cyril using pixel math. I feel it gives you a little bit better control blending the stars back in and maybe even a little bit better results. If nothing else, it's also a primer into the pixel math feature within Cyril. A lot of this stuff I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on because the video, again, is about adding the stars back in. If any of, if you have any questions around stacking and background extraction and, and stretching your image, watch that beginner's tutorial I have and then come back and, and watch this one. With that being said, I've already stacked the California Nebula. I have my result.fit file ready to go here, so we're just going to open that up. I'm going to take it out of the linear state, put it in the histogram so I can see more of what I'm working with. Give it a quick crop to get rid of these stacking artifacts. And then we're going to do a background extraction. Just generate some samples, pick up the ones that it missed on here in the bottom, and then make sure they're not sampling any of the nebula itself just by removing them. And I'm just right clicking to remove the samples that I don't want in here. Just being rough. I'm going to say compute background. And to see a good representation of what we have, I'm going to go from histogram to auto stretch. And then over to my RGB tab. That looks relatively good. It's a little aggressive over here, but for the purpose of the video, I think we're gonna be okay. So I'm gonna hit apply. And then we're gonna do a quick color calibration, photometric, just enter in the catalog number for the California Nebula, which is NGC 1499. Focal distance is good, pixel size is good. Click okay to get the colors lined up. All right, a little bit of a green tint going on, so we'll do a remove green noise quickly here. And that's looking good. So we're going to go back from auto stretch into linear. We're just going to come down here to the histogram toolbox. We're just going to give it a quick stretch. Not going to try and get too particular about things. I just want something to show you so you can see how to remove the stars and put them back in within Cyril. Click apply close and that right now is as far as I want to take this we are stretched we are color calibrated background extracted now we're going to prepare it for StarNet++ so StarNet++ has two requirements it has to be a TIFF and it has to be 16-bit so right click on the image we're going to save RGB image to TIFF I like to call it what it is so NGC 1499 you can use whatever name you want make sure 16-bit is selected and then save now we're gonna remove the stars from the image. So we're gonna run StarNet++. We're gonna to browse to the file we just created, NGC 1499. And then our output file name, we're gonna leave it the same, but we're gonna suffix it with dash starless. Click run, and this will take a minute. So we'll fast forward through this and be right back. Okay, StarNet is done, so we can close this window. Before we do anything else with that starless image, we're going to take our result.fit file, and we're going to save that as its own fit. The only reason I'm doing this is I don't want to make any changes to my original stack file. So if I have to start over, I can start over without having to restack. So I'm just going to save a copy of this effectively. So save RGB image to fits. Again, I'm going to call it NGC1499 and hit save. Now I'm going to come over to open. And we're going to locate the TIFF file that StarNet created for us, which is just the nebula without the stars. We're going to open that up and we're going to save this as a fits as well. The reason we need to save it as a fit file is because pixel math only supports fit files. You won't be able to, you won't be able to open up TIFF images. So we're preparing to use pixel math at this point. So right click, save RGB image to fits. And I'm gonna call it the same thing. If you look up here in the corner, this is our TIFF file that we have open. I'm gonna name it the same because it'll have a different file extension. So it will be a separate file. 
So NGC 1499 starless and save. So now the fun part, we're gonna come up here to image processing, pixel math, and we need to load our two fits files into the pixel math window. So we're gonna come up and hit the plus button. We're gonna select my NGC 1499.fit file. And we're gonna select the ng 1499-starless.fit file. So select both of them, click on one, hold your control key down, left click on the second one, and then open. And it'll put both of them in here for you. Now before we get into the actual math of this, which is very simple, we're going to rename our variables. You don't have to, but it makes it a little bit easier when you're looking at your pixel math to understand exactly what's going on. If you're unfamiliar with variables, just think of them of boxes that contain the files. So you can call the box name to get to your file. So we can leave them as is, but again, I'm gonna change them to make, so they make more sense. So the first one, just double click on the name. Since this is our original image with the nebula and the stars, uh, I just like to use an initialism and IWS, so image with stars. Call it whatever you want, doesn't make a difference. And then the bottom one that's starless, I'm sure you can guess, we'll just call that one starless. So now, now my IWS variable is the same thing as calling out this long path and file name. You can come up here and our formula is simply IWS, you can type it in like that, or what's easier is just come down to the path and if you double click it, it'll put the variable name in for you. So we're gonna say IWS minus, and we'll double click on the starless path down here. So image with stars minus the starless, hit apply, and there's our star image. So we can close pixel math for now. We're gonna right click and save this as a fits image. And we'll just call this one stars. If we go back to our working directory, we can see that the new files that we have here, just to keep things clean and less confusing, if you want, you can delete your two TIFF files. We no longer need them at this point. So we're just left with our fits and our, our original result fit file that was actually stacked. So if we need to start over, we've got something to start fresh with. So at this point, we're gonna come back over and we are going to open up our NGC 1499 starless fit file and do a little bit of post-processing on it. Again, like I said, check out my other video if you need some help with this stuff. I'm just gonna go through this kind of quickly. Just wanna try and darken the background and, and bring the nebula out a little bit more. Nothing too crazy. Just try and brighten it up a little bit here. That's eh, too much. Slide that black point over. It's the dark in the background. All right. So that's good. So after you've made your changes, whatever they may be, make sure you come over and hit your save button. And you can do the same thing with your stars as well. If you want, if you want to work on that, maybe pull up the saturation on the stars. Come over to open and open your stars.fit. And maybe we just wanna, like I said, bump up the saturation a little bit. Not too much. I think that looks good. Apply it. Hit your save button again. Once you're happy with both images, this is the point in the last video where we save these out as TIFFs and we opened them up in their own layers in Photoshop and we blended them back together. This time we're going to use pixel math to do that. So back into pixel math, we're going to leave our starless one in, but our original NGC 1499, we're going to click this minus button up here and remove that. Click the plus button again, and we're going to add back in our stars. So our first one still has a starless variable name, which is what we want. The stars file that we just added in has a default L1 for a variable. So we'll rename that to stars. And we'll delete our last uh, pixel math formula up top here. Then we're gonna start with the starless. Again, just double click the path. 
and we're going to say plus this time and then double click the stars so pretty simple right starless plus the stars move this out of the way a little bit i hit apply and there we go we're back to an image that we were able to post process just the nebula without affecting the stars and blowing them out or causing crazy halos or anything like that all within Cyril. And there's a couple other things that you can do too. Maybe the stars are too bright for you. So if that's the case, what you can do is come in here and let me delete stars and we can say stars plus, let's say we only want 60% of the stars image to be applied to our, our nebula image. So we would say starless plus 0 0.6 times and then we can click stars. And if you watch the screen as I click apply, you'll see how it dimmed them down and allowed the, the nebula itself to pop up a little bit more forward. So you can play with this number if you want 20%. This will really dim it down, almost completely disappear. They're still there, but you can barely see them. Uh, generally, for me, 70% seems to be a good number. Obviously, it depends on your data and, and your own personal tastes. Um, if you really like stars, you can delete the 0 0.7 and you can say two times the star's image and really go crazy. I think that's too much, but hey, if that's what you like, that's what you can do. So again, 0 0.7, we're going to apply that. I'm going to close it. I'm going to call this one done. And at this point, I would just right click and save it out to a JPEG and call it NGC 1499 final save it off and now i have a jpeg file that's ready to be shared on social media so hopefully you guys found this useful like i said if nothing else it's a nice intro nice beginner's intro in the pixel math uh, any questions suggestions as always leave them in the comments below appreciate everybody's time please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so give the video a like and i'll see you next time